Great Bear Island features a wide range of characters, all of which are very fitting for a post-apocalyptic ghost island. Some of them are not a part of Will and Astrid's story, but certainly leave a mark in the world. One of these characters, named Hank, left behind several notes that paint a picture of who they were, as well as the world around them. Within the Mystery Lake region during Wintermute Episode 2, Will can find a series of notes written by Hank. The first note you find is on a corpse by the unnamed pond and starts the Hank's Hatch side quest. Letter for Hank's niece reads, Dear Angela, you know I always told you that a time might come when you'd need to hide out for a while. I figured it might be because of the quakes, but I didn't really think about how bad things might get on Great Bear Island later on. It doesn't matter what the reason is. If you ever need to hide out for a while, if things get too bad for you in the city, or when you're visiting your mom here on the island, use this information to get into the supply cache I set up. I know, I know. Your mom told you Uncle Hank was a crazy old coot and to stay away from me. Too much research on the internet, right? All those crazy prepper sites. Well, I won't say it to you, but I'll say it to her next time I see her. Told you so. Your loving uncle, Hank. Later on, we learn more about Hank and his hobby. We can see that he had an interest in supply caches and prepper sites. This note came with a key used to open a supply cache in the nearby forestry lookout tower. It contained supplies as well as another note from Hank. Hank's journal part one reads, I've spent a lot of years in this damn lookout tower, watching the forest around Mystery Lake, and it's given me nothing but time to think about my life and the world around me and what I hear is happening. Sitting in a tower like this for days, weeks, months on end is enough to drive anyone crazy. Even if I didn't have anyone to talk to on the radio. And just let me say I wish that chatty lady would shut up once in a while. I mean, I came out here to be alone, to be away from other people. It's almost enough to make you wish all the radios, all the satellite phones and internet and stuff would just disappear. Anyway. I've been putting aside some supplies every season, leftovers or whatever I can spare, and it's added up to quite the little stash of food and equipment. Hopefully I never need it. But if I do, the ends justify the means, right? I don't think anyone needs that weird old bunker thing I found, and it makes the perfect place to hide out if shit hits the fan. You know what I mean. This note certainly tells us that Hank is crazy. Being alone for a long time will do that to a person. Hank hated people so much that seclusion in a forestry lookout tower was the ideal situation for him. Even that didn't turn out well for him. The chatty lady they're referring to is Sarah Eston, the weather announcer and radio host at the Signal Hill radio station. It is clear that Hank spent a lot of time thinking. His thoughts on the world of the long dark give us a glimpse into how bad things were getting. Being a remote place, not many people were willing to help Great Bear Island after the collapse. Supplies were so limited that a cultural shift occurred, splitting the island between mainland reliance and self-sufficiency. He saw the state of the island and knew he had to prepare for something. Along with this note was the location of his prepper cache, which he had found abandoned near the train loading zone, and the code to get in. Outside, you will find the corpse of an unknown person who was trying to get in. Inside, you will find Hank's corpse, and his final note, Hank's Journal Part 2 reads, Things have not turned out the way I hoped. I guess that's why they say hope is not a plan. I was on my way to drop some supplies off in the bunker, but wolves hunted me the whole way here and I couldn't escape them. One managed to take a chunk out of my leg just before I could get in here and slam the hatch shut. It feels like it's on fire. I think it's infected. And now I hear something like scratching on the hatch door. I'm afraid to open up. Angela, I pray to God it isn't you or your mother. But it can't be. It's too soon. I'm just going to hold out down here for a bit, and I will check when it's daylight again. Just have to find a way to keep track of the time down here. Even though Hank was preparing to hide out in the wilderness, he wasn't ready for the apocalypse. I believe the first flare caught him off guard. With the only electronic device being his radio, and knowing his dislike for the local radio channel, he most likely didn't notice that the apocalypse had started. The change in animal behavior after the first flare may have surprised him. Seeing as he was injured by a wolf, he most likely bled out or died of infection while he slept. The corpses at the pond and outside the cache were most likely his niece, Angela, and her mother. Despite all the dedication to be prepared for the worst, Hank would unfortunately not be prepared for the end of the world. 
He is one of the few characters across Great Bear Island that shows us a glimpse into the world of the Long Dark, as well as those first few days following the start of the Quiet Apocalypse. Without Hank, we wouldn't have this view of the state of Great Bear Island. If you want to see more lore videos for the Long Dark, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so I can keep making them.